Hello, I'm Rebecca Ahn with Money and Tech here at the Coin Congress in San Francisco. And I'm here with Alan Safahi, CEO and founder of ZipZap. Thanks for joining me, Alan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about ZipZap. What is it and, and what is it doing for Bitcoin? ZipZap is the on-ramp and eventually the off-ramp to digital currencies. So if uh, consumers want, wish to purchase Bitcoin or other digital currencies, whether directly through us or through one of our exchange partners, we provide the ability to, to, for them to pay in local currency in their own neighborhood, either with cash or with online bank transfers. So I imagine this is making it, it, the aim is to make it easier for anybody to be able to get an on-ramp into Bitcoin. Um, is this particularly useful, do you think, in uh, areas outside of the U.S. or developed countries? I think um, you can make a use case for both. So um, in the developed countries like U.S. and U.K. where we are live and uh, today in 34 countries, additionally in Europe that we announced today, um, in those countries um, the use case is ma mainly for investment purposes. So, um, uh, but in the, the the developing countries, uh, they have other use cases. There's other pain points, such as um, remittance is a really good use case. So customers could put money into Bitcoin and send it to an exchange in developing countries and have it converted to cash or have it pay for bills online um, so that uh, you, we could save a lot of money, you know, on the average 9% for remittance fees. And also it's faster and uh, more transparent. Depending on the country, the use case is different. Yeah. Very true, very true. Um, and you've talked a lot about the social benefits of Bitcoin with ZipZap and, and uh, every all your recent talks about Bitcoin. Would, would you say that sums up those social benefits of Bitcoin or what else would you say about that? I think that's the starting point. Uh, the, uh, there are uh, many, many applications uh, being built on top of the Bitcoin platform uh, for uh, a number of industries that are, I think almost every industry you can imagine will be disrupted the same way internet disrupted almost everything. Um, so you will have uh, disruptions in education, in real estate, in insurance, um, you know, not just financial services. But uh, I think a starting point is financial services and among that, um, remittance is a really good use case. It's low hanging fruit <laughs> and it helps um, people that uh, aren't being serviced properly and, um, and some might say even honestly. So uh, I think uh, that's a good starting place, but I'm excited about all the applications that are being built on top of Bitcoin. Does ZipSap have any plans to get into any of those other applications? No, we are uh, just a payment company and we are happy being um, the on-ramp and the off-ramp. We are announcing soon uh, ability for customers to sell their Bitcoin and to cash out in 90 plus countries. Um, so we don't have the details yet, but uh, that's something we hope to do by the end of the year. And so um, I think once we build both the cash in and the cash out options, I'm not just talking cash, but bank transfer, other methods of payment. Once we build that globally, then uh, Companies can use us as a remittance tool or they can use us for other applications, but uh, who knows? Uh, but uh, we're not going to build those apps ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. That makes sense. Uh, well, that's really exciting. I look forward to that launch. Um, so speaking of the finance sector, you actually have 19 years of experience in the finance industry. What got you into Bitcoin? Well, um, originally ZipZab uh, was founded um, on the premise to help consumers shop online and pay cash offline in ro local retailers. I, at the time uh, that I founded ZipZab, I had a prepaid card company, prepaid Visa MasterCard company, uh, that uh, consumers were contacting us worldwide trying to buy prepaid cards and we couldn't sell to them because of franchise rules and other regulations of banks. Um, so we tried to find out why uh, they're willing to go through these extra steps of you know, wiring funds to us. And eventually some of them had to come in the US and set up accounts, companies, in order to buy from us to resell to consumers in those countries. And, and I thought there's just too much friction. So once I did, dug into it, I found out that um, it's because uh, the, the existing financial service co uh, industry is not inclusive. Um, there are billions of people that are not being targeted. Um, some are, you know, people that are extremely poor. Some are people that are, uh, make two dollars a day or less. But also, anybody less than fifty-three thousand dollars a year or less is considered uh, outside of the financial inclusion. There, there are six billion or six and a half billion people that fall in the category that are not really properly being serviced. So when I started looking at that, I thought, shouldn't there be an easier way for consumers? to go pay cash and buy what they want. And it's their money, they should be able to buy what they want. But we found out that it was hard uh, to deal with merchants. Uh, the adoption rate wasn't that great. 
and um, we I had learned about Bitcoin a couple of years prior, and I thought it was a good theory, good uh, term paper, <laughs> but, uh, but I didn't know that it existed in real life until um, the CEO of Trade Hill walked into my office one day, and while we were unpacking a new office, uh, Jared said, hey, you know, um, I'd like to use your network for people to buy Bitcoins, and I thought, are you serious? That thing has taken off? <laughs> so that's how I got involved. And then eventually worked with uh, BitInstant and a number of other exchanges worldwide. And uh, now we are going a little step closer to the consumers. Uh, we're not, we are still providing payment processing for exchanges, but also we are acquiring customers, doing the Know Your Customer or KYC uh, background checks on them, and helping deliver Bitcoins by one of our exchange partners to them. So in the process, you can think of it as a test kitchen. We can see how we can do better serve consumers, and some of that knowledge we learned, we can apply to our exchange partners to help them get more customers involved. You know, As I said in my presentation today at Coin Congress, um, there are only about 500,000 people that use Bitcoins. We want that to be you know, 5 million or 50 million or more. So to do that, we have to have a lot more payment options and a lot easier way for people to, to use Bitcoin and buy Bitcoin and store Bitcoin. So do you think that's the key to the future of Bitcoin? You, um, your talk was on the state of Bitcoin and um, in this year, but do you think for the rest of this year and ongoing, that's the that's the yeah. key to the future? Yeah, I think we're on the right track with building out. Um, by the end of this year, we will have uh, over 100 plus countries where people can buy Bitcoin through us. We have over 90 plus countries that will get, sell Bitcoins or get cash out. So we solved the cash in and cash out problem. Um, so we've done our share. Now the rest of the industry, they need to step up and create really good user friendly wallets and really good use cases. I mean, today, why would anybody use Bitcoin to shop online where they can use their credit card if in the developed countries, unless those merchants provide discounts or some other benefits to consumers? So I think the merchants are going to see, um, you're going to see in the next year or so, a lot of discounts for merchants, a lot of incentives for because uh, they save money, they don't have any chargeback problems, um, and they go after a really good uh, you know, demographic of customers. So it makes sense for them to offer some incentives to, to acquire customers, so to get people to switch their behaviors from credit cards to, to go to Bitcoin. Also, the security has gotten much better, companies like Zappo. So you have Circle you know, Financial that introduced really good uh, user-friendly wallets, and you see um, you know, companies like Zappo that do the wallet and now have a prepaid card or a debit card coming up. I shouldn't call it prepaid card, it's a debit card. And um, then you see um, you know, a myriad of new um, uh, you know, opportunities. Uh, so I'm excited about companies that are building on top of the platform. Um, I just, you know, we just need to, we have the front seat to, uh, the, I think what's uh, going to be the b biggest disruption in our lifetime, the, the, the legacy of our generation. So it's a great place to be. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> That's why we created Money in Tech. Um, so uh, as a final question, um, the Ben Lasky and the New York Department of Financial Services came out with a proposal recently, and you mentioned that you've been doing more KYC and you know compliance for your company. What are your thoughts on the proposal for more regulation from New York, which of course only applies to New York companies, but could have implications for other companies in other states? Right. Uh, so I think clarity is very important. So when I started uh, ZipZab and I hired a very capable and very experienced um, compliance officer, um, they came from Wells Fargo and B of A. And um, what, the first thing I told her is, uh, your number one job is to keep us from going to jail. <laughs> and because there was no clarity, we didn't know what that meant. We didn't know where do you draw the line. So we decided to take the strictest restrictions and apply that. Um, so basically, we KYC everybody, <laughs> even if you're buying a dollar's worth of Bitcoin, we're going to do a full due diligence on you. It costs us more than the money we make, but or the money you even get on Bitcoin. But we, we're doing that because there was no clarity. So I think in a way, um, you know, the uphill battles that we've had to wage around the world, dealing with banks, dealing with partners, it's been horrendous for us. It's been very difficult. It shouldn't have been. And what I hear the most from those partners is the lack of clarity. Nobody wants to do something that would cause their CEO to go to jail. So, um, so therefore, everybody's being very conservative. And I think in that sense, having regulations and licensing is good for, um, for the industry. Even though some of my friends uh, that are more libertarian you know, and uh, more um, you know, enthusiastic about Bitcoin's uh, anonymity features would not agree. I think we, um, the good of the 
the many odd ways, the good of a few. So uh, uh, Bitcoin has benefits, social benefits for billions of people, and it may inconvenience a few hundred thousand people that are really, um, you know, purist. But I think uh, it's we need to do that in order to, um, you know, grow the and take advantage of billions of people. You know, so remittance is a major case. Um, you know, when remit when banks stop or money transfer companies stop sending remittance to s countries in Africa, people suffer. People don't eat. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen. We need to make sure that we keep the cost on. And um, so I think, um, in a way, uh, having legislation is good. But having said that, I'm not really a fan of legislation altogether. Uh, I think it's an inevitable. It's a necessary evil. Uh, so our job in the industry is to really contain it now to make sure it's good legislation, not some that stifle innovation and we need to focus instead of um, fighting about you know whether or not there should be licensing we should focus on what kind of licensing it should be so I've outlined a bunch of steps in my presentation and I'm working with several industry groups like data and others that um, are uh, advocating um, let's take these positions on this you know the size of the uh, the company matters you know for licensing you can license a startup with two people the same way you license somebody that holding billions of dollars worth of people's bitcoins. So uh, we need to have a differentiation about the tier, different tiers. Um, the timing is really, really short. We need much, much more time to uh, be able to those, get those comments to people, especially startups that don't have resources to you know, react quickly. So we need to make sure that they have enough time to be able to get their voices heard, which is the majority of Bitcoin industry. So we, um, we need time, we need to have better definition of the scope um, you know, is this just for Bitcoin or is it all cryptocurrencies? Um, you know, is it just for New York residents or if somebody does business with a company that does business with New York, then we also, that person also have to be licensed. We don't know that. Um, not allowing you to invest your own money in, um, you know, in Bitcoin, that's preposterous. I mean, um, you know, this is what I don't like about our business, our financial services industry. We take people's money and then we tell them how they can spend it and where and how and with whom. And if you do everything right, we ch you know, charge you a fee. <laughs> and if you don't do it right, we penalize you. We are worse in terms of customer relations than any industry I know of. So, you know, here's another example, you know, telling people that they can't invest their own money in Bitcoin. I understand from a custodial perspective, if it's somebody else's funds, maybe you have to have some rules and guidelines around it, which is I think it's okay to license exchanges, but not okay to license developers that are writing code that will never, you know, hold people's funds. So those are the things that discussions we should have as a group. Definitely. Well, it'll be very interesting to see how that public comment period progresses and whether we're able to open the, the window and make all that happen. I, I urge everyone to participate. And uh, first thing is uh, write uh, to the New York Department of Financial Services and ask them to extend the, the period. Um, we need at least a year to do this. It took them a year to write it. We should have a year to respond. And uh, 45 days is not enough, N not nearly. Uh, so um, then then let people get involved and let them understand the issues and because this is so important this is the biggest legacy of our generation as I said so what happens in New York now is going to affect other states and other countries so we need to make sure that we do this first one right we cannot make a mistake yes absolutely agreed well thank you for speaking with us Alan thank you very much thank you this is Alan Safahi of ZipZap and I'm Rebecca on with Money and Tech